What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the altar again. And this time we are here with Martin of the almighty Dark Tranquility. Thank you so much for being here. As a keyboard player myself, this is a huge honor for me as I've cited you as an inspiration behind my playing as well. So thanks for being here today. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. And I'm, yeah, I'm excited to, to talk to you. Yeah, excited to talk to you too. This new album, End Time Signals. Absolutely awesome. Was this just meant to be sort of like a continuation or picking up where you left off after Moment? Or was this meant to be kind of like new uncharted territory for Dark Tranquility? I think it's both. Uh, I mean, well, of course, it's going to be a reaction to Moment, which is the, the previous album. But uh, with the End Time Signals, I think we're looking to to uncharted territory but we're also looking deeper into our past i think you're going to find like dna from albums like uh, maybe character we have some a bit faster paced songs so we what we wanted to do was kind of kind of look back to our whole discography and use the whole base of dark liquidity as an inspiration to move forward mm -hmm. so is there a chance that we'll get like a classic songs because like i feel like as a fan of dark tranquility like i could tell if you play me like 30 seconds of a song that that would be off of haven or damage done or fiction or character etc when you make like a new dark tranquility album is it, does it ever go into it with like a vision did you go into ed type signals being like let's sort of bring back some of the character elements or did it just kind of turn out that way i think with this one more more than other albums, we were actually sitting down before and discussing what we wanted to do. When we, when we just had a blank sheet of paper, we sat down, Mikkel and me and Johan, and talked about uh, what, what defines a Dark Tranquility album? What is it that we do that is different from other bands? And what, what, and what album in that kind of universe do we want to do at this point in time? And I think um, the times that we're living in right now, if, 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 if you're looking back like four years ago, it, we are in a different reality right now because we have suffered a pandemic together, all of us. Uh, and, and I mean, uh, that, like for instance, the political landscape, it doesn't matter if you where, where you are in the political spectrum. I think we're at the point where we're, we are further apart than ever before. And, uh, and, and this, this is kind of stuff that we carried into the process. So we wanted to make an album that was kind of serious and dark. We wanted to go, go a bit uh, further back to our dark roots. And if 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 um, if a mood was uh, kind of a, an inspiration from a previous album, so I think it would be more like we are the void, maybe that, that kind of grittiness and that darkness. Super underrated but, uh, album. We're looking back to all that. Yeah, I've always said we. Yeah, are... you think so? I, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Well. I, well, one, it's Go sentimental ahead. to me because that was the first um, album I actually discovered Dark Tranquility on. I was a late bloomer with Dark Tranquility. The first time I saw. I discovered Dark Tranquility when you were on the tour in 2010 with Kill Switch Engage and The Devil Wears Prada. Um, that was, uh, oh. yeah, and I know that you were touring off that cycle at that time. So when you were playing Surface the Infinite and Dream Oblivion, um, uh, just an absolute magical experience uh, in that regard. Well, great. I mean, I remember that, I remember that tour. We, that was, we were in uh, the United States for a long time. We were first with Kill Switch Engage and The Devil Wears uh, product and then we went on our own headline tour too. so so we felt like we were in america for the whole for half a year but uh yeah it was for the we, we the void album i'm happy that you found us on that one i think it's a special album you're right that a lot of people it didn't find maybe that much uh, mainstream success as the other albums but i think it's a very special they has a special tonality with this darkness into it yeah that i think that we're bringing back a bit on end time signals well i also just loved um because uh, one of my favorite Dr. Kulity songs and one of my favorite keyboard parts you played is the grandest uh, accusation. Um, just the, the because I feel like that that has sort of like the same sort of power as a track, like it's a fur off of a fiction. And uh, just uh, Mikhail singing, uh, we are the cemetery for unlived life. Like that is a perfect demonstration. It's almost unsettling on just how much that predicted i feel like the whole world is a cemetery and we are not living life to our fullest so i've always said that dark tranquility is the thinking man's melodic death metal band and we are the void is a testament to that well that's a that's a great compliment and i think uh, michael does really well in interpreting the world that we're living with uh, that we're living in with his lyrics it's always a comment on 
where we are at the moment. Mm -hmm. Has Dark Tranquility, like, has, do you consider Dark Tranquility... Uh, a lot of people listen to Dark Tranquility and assume that every album is a concept album. Like, what is that one to feel, one to break, one to take it all away off of the silence in between, you know? Or, uh, you know, what are we blind at heart with off of fiction? Like, a lot of people think that the albums are meant to be thought-provoking as much as they are meant to make you bang your head. Do you, is, like, Dark Tranquility a very conceptually driven band? I think I think so. I mean, uh, we were talking about We Are the Void. That's a concept album about uh, actually dying, about death, the concept of death. So there, there was an exploration of death from different angles. Uh, uh, and I think the title We Are the Void is a reflecting uh, like um, because we are dark tranquility. We are the void. So the, the dark tranquility is like death um, in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think um, with. Um, with this album, I mean, with Moment, we were, uh, when Michael was writing the lyrics, we were kind of starting the pandemic. And now we've seen all the consequences of the pandemic. We, we, we've seen, like we talked about the political landscape. And, then he, and also, like here in Europe, we have, a, we have a war really close to the European borders now. And it, it, it's a different, different, uh, it's a different uh, urgency to, our, to our, our common time right now. And I think... Uh, uh, it really felt we really felt that we needed to make something that reflected that and and you see michael and i guess you've seen him on you know, live shows he's a very optimistic outgoing guy but we, even him was kind of like super depressed during this these times and i think writing the lyrics is kind of like therapeutic for him to kind of process uh what we're going through so i think uh, and time signals it's, it's kind of a comment to to our to a, the time that we're living in right now is that what the meaning of the album title is? The signals of the end of times are near. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, uh, yes, it, it is, and uh, it, it's a, it's a theme throughout the lyrics as well. Um, it's not. I don't think. I don't consider the title as a prophecy. I, I see it more like like uh, uh, like like you see the signals in the in the in our environment, and that we need to kind of be careful right now and take the right moves the next 10 years so we don't end up in a horrible place. I mean, at the core, we are optimistic. And I think humanity always have a way of bouncing back and like found, found a, a level again. Yeah. But we need to kind of consider what we're doing to, to move forward. I, I saw um, a quote or like a meme, if you will, of all things, but like it really did say perfectly, hard times create strong people, strong people create good times, good times create weak people and weak people create hard times and we are right now in the weak people creating hard times aspect so i can agree with that it's a cycle i mean uh, and, and during good times it's hard to remember that it, what that there was any hard times uh but i think we, like, yeah if we, we're the weak people right now we're then we are entering hard times for a while mm -hmm. But uh, I guess we're going to bounce back. If that meme is correct, uh, we're going to bounce back. Yeah, well, we're, we're definitely going to. I, I still think that um, there's a lot of... Um, there's Because, like, Dark Tranquility, I mean, dark is in the band title. There's a lot of darkness that's involved with it, but there's so much beauty demonstrated in it. I think Dark Tranquility's sound, it, it really represents the beauty of darkness and the beauty of, like, misanthropy. Um, it, when it comes to the emotions, because I think everything from the keyboards and the programming that you incorporate to the lyricism, to the riffs and the rhythm, everything just works so well together. When you are all creating, are you all in kind of like the same emotional headspace? Or is it better off if you are all in your different worlds when creating and then kind of like combining them all together? I, I think you... Uh, we're definitely like the first example that you're saying. We're we're in the same emotional headspace, at, at least for what we're for, for what we're composing. Um, when we start out writing, and we, uh, and first we discuss what kind of material we want to do. But um, I think there's a lot of different approaches for, for a band to create a song. Maybe a band starts with a riff or a cool beat, but we are always going to search for the mo emotion first. When we find that emotion, that's something that we react to. Uh, we kind of try to take everything else away from it so we have that uh, emotion and kind of try to explore it and discover it from different angles and, and uh, so we decide this is the emotion that we're going for and then we start writing from that 
uh, and and I think and, and try to find a way to communicate that emotion to an audience. So uh, emotion is definitely at the core of what we do. If we if we're not emotionally driven by what we are creating, uh, I think we would uh, lose interest in the song. At least in our band, we wouldn't uh, just um, a good hook and a, a technical riff isn't. Uh, I like that music too, but it's not what we're going for. We're going for the for for for, for an emotional message, and it's, I guess it's rooted in. Like when we talked about it, we, we kind of uh, had some common ground in, in a few words, and it's, it's it's we think it's like what the music that we create is is the area where melancholy meets rage. This this area where, where both of those feelings are kind of uh, close together, and that's that's the area area that we try to explore okay. with our band. Being a keyboard player, because um, this is something I've always wondered, p- being a piano player myself, because. With guitar, for example, you could bend the string, you could put ten different like effects on the pedal, you could like you know change the tunings and all that to adjust the note and accommodate it. But with piano, an A is an A, a C is a C, a G is a G, like it, it, and you know and you have your sharp and flats and whatnot. Is there at all? Has there ever been a time where it almost felt, for lack of better words, limited in what you're able to incorporate or being that you do so much programming and there's a lot of effects in your keyboards as well that's never been an issue i, I get what you're saying yeah i mean like an a is an a but at the same time with it with a with, with, with just a piano you have the whole range of a symphony orchestra basically you can have the deep bass into a, a, like a much broader palette than a guitar you, okay okay you can't bend the string with a piano but i work with a lot with a lot with synthesizers analog synthesizers and there's so much that's that's going on when you're when you're working with uh, actual uh, old analog gear because it's going to behave differently. You need to tune it. You need, need to kind of be careful about it. And then when you incorporate effects, and uh, uh, the effects kind of adds the emotion, for, for motion and emotion to the sounds. And and that's the way I create my my soundscape is by playing around and experimenting with a lot of different synthesizers. So I'm a synth nerd. I think I have twenty twenty five synthesizers here in the studio. Uh, and uh, I'm a collector, so <laughs> if I can get one, I will have it. And I experiment a lot, like between albums, because I'm so. Uh, um, it's just uh, how I'm pro- how, how I'm programmed is to kind of experiment with synthesizers. Absolutely, because I, you know, from going back to We Are the Void again, I mean, uh, the the synthesizing aspects in Dream Oblivion, I think are really unsettling, the way that you bring almost kind of like a quasi-industrial effect to it. But then like, um, you know, my favorite Dark Tranquility song, Blind at Heart, uh, where the piano that's incorporated in that chorus is just very emotional driven to it. Again, beauty and rage and like um, melancholy and rage is definitely the best way to describe it. I think... If you not to discredit everybody else, but if you just put your keyboard in your synthesizer tracks, I think that alone would also demonstrate that as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I mean, and, and there is a lot I put in there, uh, and I think if you just remove them, sometimes you cannot re- really hear what I'm doing because there's so many layers. But it's at, it adds kind of to this atmosphere to to the, to the track that maybe sets the sets the mood for the, for the songs. Mm-hmm. When you came in, because correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Haven was your first record with Dark Tranquility, uh, right? So when you came in, were you yeah. looking at Projector and The Minds, The Gallery and Skydancer being like, this is what I'm supposed to bring into Dark Tranquility? Or for the making of Haven and Onward, you were sort of allowed to bring your own mix into Dark Tranquility? I mean, I was I was friends with the band for, for a long time before I joined the band. Uh, we were in the same circle soon. In Gothenburg, and they they decided quite early that they wanted to have a keyboard player, and they asked me. They had me in mind, and they asked me already after the gallery. Uh, but I couldn't understand what a synthesizer would do in the music of the gallery. I didn't. I didn't know how to fit it, and I I had different ambitions back then. And then they made the mind side was the same thing there. I couldn't understand it. But when they made Projector, which is a different, really different album from from the, the ones that they did before Projector, and they asked me again, and then I could really understand. Okay, here I understand what the synthesizer could do. Uh, so I, I was kind of obsessing over Projector. I was I was touring on Projector, uh, so I was in the band when we were out touring. So I, I really got to dig deep into the material while we were creating Haven, and uh, and I think. 
this, I was a new member. They always gave me a lot of freedom to explore whatever I wanted because uh, they, they knew kind of what way I, I sounded and that's what they were looking for. So I always had this freedom. Uh, obviously, I was a, a lot younger then. I wasn't at, at that experience. At, Downwise, maybe Haven is not my proudest moment, but it was my first. So, so you, you always have to go go from there. Well, well, I can tell <laughs> but, you this. Uh, so when we heard the treason wall and monochromatic stains and everything off of uh, damage done, I, I still I think that to me I, I'm not like saying this to blow smoke. Maybe I'm a little biased, but damage done in fiction. Those two albums to me I think are just as, if not more so, revolutionary than Slaughter of the Soul because. The like I love Slaughter of the Soul. It's a thrasher. It's quick. It's in your face. It shows melodic death metal, but the melody, like I think those albums proved on just how much melody you could really bring in to this death metal sound. It still make it brutal, but really change that emotion. I love Slaughter of the Soul, but to me, I listen to it for the same reason I would listen to Tomb of the Mutilated or Once Upon a Cross. To me. This is what melodic death metal really is. It shows the true capabilities of it. Well, that's a great compliment. I, I, I mean, I love Slaughter of the Soul. I think it's uh, it's as close to a perfect album that you can make. It's it's just like it's a really great album. But uh, I can see what you're saying that we that we are introducing other elements with damage done and fiction. That that's that's broadening kind of the palette of melo- melo- melodic death metal. And it's a great compliment, of course, that you can find that you can see all the nuances that we're working with and that we're going for. Um, yeah, fiction was I think yeah, both of them were. Uh, for, for the band, both because we made Haven and, and it, it sent us off in one direction. With Damage Done, we kind of went back to the, the aggression of, of earlier albums, but combining with the new sounds from Haven. So I, I, remember, I remember it was such a relief when we, when we released uh, Damage Done and also Fiction. Uh, it was, uh, uh, I think it was an important album in our career. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the inspiration to create that emotion that you demonstrate in your sins, because it's a mad scientist experiment, but it's also a very emotional experiment as well. Does the inspiration to strike out of the blue for you, or do you just kind of have to go and seek it out? I think inspiration was something that came out of the blue when we were younger, I guess, because when we, when we had that, um, we still have that same hunger, but we also know we all, now we are not in un, uncharted territories. So um, now you have to be a little bit more disciplined. Uh, I think I have I, I am more I have more I'm more secure in myself now when we're, when we're searching for something, because so I I can lean back and really look for that emotion. And if I if I find that, find emotion, I'm pretty sure that we will get there in the end with the track. Uh, but in the early days, I think we were too eager. I mean, like a young person, you're really eager to to impress or to um, to, to make a mark immediately. Uh, where we can now explore a little bit more um, nowadays. Uh, yeah, but the, but the inspiration and the creativity. I think now uh, you need to you need to kind of uh, set off time to do it. And some days, I used to, I used to tell like. When we're in the studio, uh, I work like all days, all hours from the day. And uh, when um, when when my wife asks me why I'm not coming home, I'm, I'm just saying, I don't I don't know how much time it's gonna take. I just know when it's done. Sometimes it takes one hour. Sometimes it sometimes it takes twenty hours uh, to to get there. So I guess uh, to, to stick with it, even when you don't have the inspiration, to kind of continue forcing it, you will get there eventually. You just have to be open to 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 uh, when it happens. Does a different note, or even within the case of synthesizers, a different effect express maybe a different side of yourself as well? I think so. I mean, uh, and um, like you said, I I I'd like to program synthesizers because I like this. I think uh, the sounds that you can create are really emotional, but I also like the mechanical elements, like uh, of a uh, usually sometimes I will have. Uh, Synth bass pushing the track from behind, like 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 being there. You don't you, you cannot tell that it's in the mix, but it's there pushing everything. Uh, so I think you can definitely you can definitely do different emotions. You talked about Dream of Living kind of industrial sounds. Sometimes a, a synthesizer can be more synthesizer can be more aggressive than a guitar, if you, if you want it to be, and it can be it's a, such a lean instrument as well. Uh, so there's definitely definitely a lot of a lot of. Uh, 
personalities from synthesizers and effects uh, because effects is, effects is pretty much what's bring what's bringing everything to life Do, have you thought like um because i feel like the the effects bring such imagery behind it too i mean are you almost seeing images in a way because um even though i know he's not in the band anymore i know that nicholas was very involved with the art direction as well so it almost seems like dark tranquility is such a visual experience as much as it is a musical experiences as well our visions coming in and with the concepts that you mentioned of end time signals as well being demonstrated are you is there a lot of visions that are incorporated as well are you seeing different things or hearing or yeah being in different atmospheres depending on the effects I think when we when we write the uh, music, it's kind of conceptual and it's more emotions. It's like it's like it does an emotion have a color? Yeah, sometimes it does. Uh, so, so, but in our minds, it's very conceptual. But uh, on this on this album, we talked a lot with Nicholas, um, who made the artwork again. About uh, since we had this sit down before we started writing it, we we did it as well with the, with the visual aspects. And, um, and Nicholas made a lot of different paintings uh, for us to choose from and. Nothing seemed like exactly like the right fit. And then we saw this, uh, I think you've seen the, the cover by now for Plan Time Signals. It's two persons that are kind of in need in, in, in a wave of uh, catastrophe. We saw those two persons and me and Michael and said to Nicholas, can you show us more? Where, where are these p two people at? What's, ha what's going on with them? And then he started to paint this universe. And uh, when I saw the, the album cover and all the cover art that Nicholas that Nicholas created it fits really so well with with what we had experiencing been experiencing in our emotions but he is an artist so he could like really put the finger on it it, it was so much better to see it when 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 uh, uh, when he when he presented the the artwork for the for the for the album and, and it's always kind of this revelation because you work you're working with the album for such a long time you have your emotions you have your ideas on kind of what it is but then you see the, the visual re visual representation of what's going to accompany the album and you, you go like oh so this is what we were doing mm -hmm. fantastic <laughs> thank well, you Nicholas. whenever i listen to a fiction song i'm seeing white and gray and that sort of pale color when i'm listening to damage done i'm getting like a lot of blood stained red and whatnot and then if i listen to like an atoma song mm -hmm. I'm getting like a lot of that wavy green, if you will. So the, yeah. it is a very it is a very visual experience as much as it is a sonic experience. Yeah, mm. yeah Nick is fantastic at, the, he, at at having that finger on the pulse uh, for, for what needs to be done for, for visually for the band. It's, uh, yeah, would work with anyone else. Mm. And the final question I wanted to ask you is: being such an emotional experience uh, for Dark Tranquility, it's always great to have that as your fuel, but. Emotions are a very abstract concept and it could be a lot very chaotic and the technical proficiency of your music is really a force to be reckoned with. Has, do you, do you, is it hard to sometimes find a balance between letting all that emotion out but also kind of being focused, uh, not having a focus shift, pun intended, but uh, like uh, shifting your focus, <laughs> shifting your focus uh, in order to make sure that you technically get the composition correct and the, all the right notes are hidden and you say what you have to say, etc. I think that is the challenge. And I mean, to, to, to find that raw emotion and then to kind of present it in a way that doesn't sound mechanical, it needs to sound, the emotion needs to be intact, but, uh, but also to, to kind of be sure that you get the emotion across. You have to kind of plan it out. And that's why I think that's why we kind of grab the emotion first and try to explore it and then decide how do we want to present this emotion? What way, how can we translate this into, into the audience? But then I'm, 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 a, I'm a very meticulous uh, producer. I mean, I have my studio, so we have, um, uh, we're not limited by budget to, to, for, to, to having a long session in the studio. I mean, the end time signals, we were, reco we were recording in the studio for four months. And if we would have done that in, a, in another studio, we would have been bankrupt, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so we can really afford ourselves the time and we can afford ourselves the time to maybe lose ourselves in the wrong direction for a while and, and realize, okay, no, that was the wrong move and take that away and go back and try to move forward to, to, to the right place. So, um, yeah, and, and we work a lot with the details. Uh, I think, uh, I think oh, maybe that's also something that makes us, I, I mean, a, a lot of bands, of course, work with details, but it's a big thing for us to have everything kind of fit together uh, in the end. The, the emotion and the technical aspects. Definitely. 
So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time. As always, thank you for uh, always giving us amazing new music. And on a personal level, thank you for also being an inspiration behind how I play as well. Is there just some anything else that you would like to promote for Dark Tranquility? I know we got anti signals coming out. Uh, you got the late summer, early fall North American tour. What else we can, can we be expecting from Dark Tranquility with a brand new album cycle? Well, thank you so much. It's very flattering what you're saying about uh, music and also about my work that it was inspiring. Thank, thank you so much. It's very flattering. Uh, well, it, we, I mean, we're excited about this new album and I want to say thank you for everyone who's stuck with us and and, and, and anyone who's new to, to kind of explore our music. Uh, we are excited to come out and play in Time Signals. Uh, we, we're super proud of the album. We're going to be out with Amorphis in America uh, in September and then we're going to go with Moonspell uh, in Europe um, in October, November. We are like like what we did on the album. We were looking forward, to kind of moving forward to the future, but we we're also looking back to our, to our past of Dark Tranquility, and that's also what we plan to do in the live setting. So we're looking at our whole discography, rehearsing new songs that we haven't played before. So we're going to try to bring new life to our set list and play something that you never heard before, but that you may know from before. Hell yeah, I I, I would prefer you just play the whole catalog, but I mean we that's. Uh... <laughs> But <laughs> maybe, maybe combined we will. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, but, you're, uh, yeah. you're playing. Um, you're playing the day before my birthday in New York City at Gramercy Theater, so you can count me there. So. Oh, great! Thank you. So, see you there in New York. Yep, I live four blocks away from Gramercy awesome. Theater, so so it'll be impossible for me to miss it. Oh, really? Yeah. You're that you're that close? Okay, yep. fantastic. Yep. So I'll, yeah. I'll be there regardless. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. We are here with Dark Tranquility. Be sure to check out End Time Signals. We'll see you next time on Heavy New York.